Hello all, welcome to Shayla Pegleg. Uh, it's a Tuesday afternoon, well, Tuesday night, <clears throat> actually. Um, doing a face shave today. Uh, continuing with the razors from my Magnificent 11. This is my versatile choice. Um, it is Rockwell. My handle, yes, because if you guys follow me at all, I don't know if you can see it. It says R1. We're going to start with the R1 plate. Um, if you guys follow me at all, I got mine, my Rockwell 6C, off of eBay for 30 bucks. Okay. Nowhere in the advertisement for or the listing for it did it say it did not come with a handle. It, the pictures showed it had a handle, but it did not say it didn't come with a handle. And when I got the razor, I got the three razor heads and the top cap. Or the base plate, three base plates in the top cap, but no handle. So this is my handle that I made. So that's where we are with that. We're also using Hoffman Soap Company in partnership with or collaboration with Hendrix Classics and Company. Burn the ships. Excellent, excellent label. You got the ship. You got the sun setting in the background. And you got the skull. Excellent label. The scent on this soap, I've been doing a little research on it. I mean, I heard, I've heard it, and I did some more research. Is like a dupe of um, Old Spice. The soap itself is not. I will say that. P A A Q for appreciate. I will say that the soap itself is not a dupe of Old Spice. It is in a way, it's not 100% a dupe of Old Spice. It's a deeper, darker Old Spice on the soap. Now the splash is definitely Old Spice. And before this video started, I compared it with the new Old Spice and they're damn near identical. Damn near. Not 100%, but they're damn close. So, I would definitely say that it is an Old Spice dupe. So, Rusty, if you're looking for your Old Spice soaps, there's another one for you. Hoffman's Soap Company. You can get it at the wet shaving store. It's Burn the Ships. There's my lather. Lathered it up in a cereal bowl. And we're going to apply with the 24 millimeter PAA Starcraft brush. I'm beginning to like 24 and 22 millimeter, even to the point of 20 millimeter, on my face. Actually, I'm using this 24 and I'm thinking right now that it's a little big. So I would say 22s and 20s are better for me on my face. And I like 28s and 30s, even 26 on my head. So that kind of leaves 24s in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but I'll use them on my face and my dome. But I'm really starting to like the little bit smaller ones. Look at that. It's so all over the place. This stuff, this stuff just blew up in the bowl. I have got so freaking everywhere. Look at this. I mean, look it just it about a fingernail size, not even a thumbnail size, but a fingernail size of the soap, and it just blew up everywhere. Using plate one for the Rockwell on the first cheek. Okay, 
Now we're going to take plate 1 off. And you know what I didn't do? And I wanted to do it before I started the video and I just didn't do it. That's a 6. So R2. Okay. This thing's being a pain in the beat. Is up. It, it's just the washer was being a pain in the butt. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. That was what was going on. The washer was cockeyed. It wasn't, I think the handle seat in deeper. So I, I went to knock it off onto my towel and it dropped on the floor. So with no more washer for this machine. I don't know if you can see that. It's an R2 under there. I'll tell you what, the R2 was definitely more aggressive than the R1, naturally. And that's an R3. And this is why it's the most versatile razor on my list. Not as easy as changing on a adjustable, which a lot adjustable or even a more modern day adjustable reason, but still not that bad. Yeah, we're starting to we're starting to get into some cutting action. This is the fourth use on this blade, and it is a Dorco Titan on the fourth use. I like these blades. These are good blades. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's a Dorco, but it's not a plain Dorco. The plain Dorcos are the ones that people generally have problems with. R2, so that should be R4, and it is. R2 did pretty good. R1 didn't do diddly. This is almost like I didn't shave at all. Three is good. Four is good. Okay. All right. Those two plates are done. Now we're going with R5. And when you put these in, When you put the plates in for a six or six C or a six S, the letter and number, the letter is always going to be an R, but the number you see on the bottom that is stick is on this side is the plate that you're using. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic scent. We all like Old Spice, right? This is definitely just a deeper, darker Old Spice type scent. It's almost, almost a leathery type scent. Almost, not quite. It's musky. 
You can smell the musk in it. It's almost a hints of leather to it. Almost. Not quite. It's just it's weird. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's just Darker, darker old spice. All right, this is plate five. We're going to do the whole across the grain pass with plate five. All right. All right. August 9th, 1898. Thought I forgot, didn't you? I just don't have much to talk about on this one. August 9th, 1898. Rudolf Diesel received his patent in Germany, which he later went on to patent it in other countries too. For, guess what? The diesel engine. In 1898. Yeah, I felt I got myself right there on the neck. Plate 5, I got myself. I did not have the proper angle. I was too steep on the blade. And I got myself. I felt when I did it and I looked and I was like, oh, you don't have the proper angle, you dumbass. His first engine that he tried to do in 1892 was a diesel engine. We're going to go plate six now. I think I got myself right there too flipping cheek over flap. He tried to make an engine that would run on ammonia fumes and it exploded on him. And he was injured and spent some time in the hospital. And after that accident, he was dealing with health and eyesight problems after the rest of his life. He was dealing with health and eyesight problems because his ammonia engine exploded. But he was running it on the same principles that he came up with the diesel engine. Very high compression with a glow plug. Now, if you don't know what a diesel engine does, all right, a gas engine has the piston stroke. It's the up and down motion of the piston. Piston comes up and it compresses a mixture of, of gasoline and fuel and compresses it and vaporizes it and the spark plug fires a spark that ignites the gasoline because it's much more volatile than diesel fuel. Diesel fuel requires a higher temperature to ignite it. The gasoline explodes, drives the piston back down, drives other pistons up and every time it does that you're creating horsepower. Okay, the concept of a diesel engine is when the piston's coming up it's creating great amounts of pressure like two to two and a half times of what a standard gasoline engine does inside the cylinder the, the combustion of the fuel the com compression of the fuel and the gasoline and the, and the diesel fuel together to vaporize it atomize it and a spark it a spark will not ignite it because diesel fuel ignites at a much higher temperature than gasoline so you need a glow plug which the minimum heat for a glow plug to ignite diesel fuel is 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So some of the modern cars run up to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, oh, got myself down here too. Didn't feel that one. 
All right, plate six. Got to go care for her, guys. So anyways, in 1898, even before 1900, he was getting a patent for the diesel engine. He, he had also made an engine same diesel engine, but he had run it on vegetable oil and peanut oil with a lot less fanfare than what the diesel engine came out with. And as you know, today we use peanut oil and vegetable oil and some people even use recycled restaurants have an oil what they call an oil drum it's got a little filter on the top and when you clean your fryers you take the oil out that you drained into a pot and you dump it and that little filter on top filters out all the big chunks that might have gotten through the filter that you filtered it through in the car in the well, in the restaurant, if you're changing oil in your fryers, you don't filter it. You only filter it if you can reuse the oil. If you're not reusing the oil, you're just dumping it in the pot, and that filter will get any big chunks out so it doesn't go into the oil. And people are collecting that now and burning it in their diesel trucks. And when you drive, you know you're driving behind a truck that's using recycled restaurant oil because the truck exhaust will smell like french fries. And that is a fact. If you're driving behind a truck using recycled hospital fryer oil, their exhaust smells like french fries. So, anyways, all the stuff that they're claiming big news on today, biofuels, biofuels, was going on in early 1900s, I think it was 1901, 1902, he did the peanut oil and vegetable oil engines. So, we'll jump ahead to 19, oh crap, 1913, 1912, 1913. We'll jump ahead to 1913. On September, September 29th, 1913. I was trying to remember the date. I had it all memorized, but I forgot what it was. September 29th, 1913. He was on the SS Dresden, a German cruise ship, heading to England to meet with a diesel engine manufacturer in England and members of the Royal Navy for a contract. He had already proposed his engine to the German Navy, and they were discussing it, kicking it about, talking about it, but anybody that has something like that to sell they want to make sales they don't want to sit around and wait for a government agency to make up their mind the more places they can put it out to to try and get an answer that somebody wants to buy their their merchandise the better off they are so he was going to talk to the Royal Navy during his cruise to England he never showed up on September 30th he was seen at dinner he was seen having a drink after dinner and smoking a cigar. He was seen at the railing smoking his cigar, having his drink. And then he supposedly went to bed. He was never seen again. Now, some conspiracy theorists say that the German Navy, because he was going to talk to the Royal Navy, killed him, threw him overboard. But that may not be the case because he, when he left for his trip for England, he left his wife a satchel, a suitcase, a soft-sided carpet bag, so to speak. You may remember those from after the Civil War, the carpet baggers. That type of, of case with 20,000 German francs in it. 
he left that for his wife. And he also left instructions and account numbers for their bank accounts. And when they were checked, the bank accounts were virtually empty. So he was almost broke. He left her $20,000. And in his diary that he kept every day, was left on the ship. And for September 29th, 1913, on that date, there was just drawn a cross. A Christian cross was drawn on that date, on that page. So, more than likely, with him leaving the money for his wife and the, about them, them being broke and leaving the cross on the last entry of his diary, more than likely he committed suicide. Because probably the financial, he was broke. And, it, you know, it's a, it's a big disappointment to fail your family like that. Got a little bit through here and still a little bit on the sides like I normally do. So, he most likely committed suicide. Now, we're going to jump ahead again to 1950. Yam, Yamnan? I think it's Yamnan. Japanese diesel motor company. In 1950, the CEO of Yamnan, he founded, he founded, he founded the company, the, the CEO. He founded it. He went to Berlin, Germany in 1950, and he was looking for a monument to Rudolf Diesel. Could not find one because there was not one. So, after he founded his company, he put up a, a memorial, a statue, to Rudolf Diesel in the park. And in, in commemoration of his contribution to diesel motors, because he invented them, where nobody had thought to do that before. So it took a Japanese engine manufacturer to put up a memorial to a German automotive or motor engineer. It was just, I found, what I found the most interesting was his early experiments with ammonia for fuel. And his later experiments with biodiesel. What, a hundred years before it became popular? even became a thing. This razor for most guys is kind of like an adjustable for most guys. They will find the setting they like the most and leave it there. You will find the plate you like the most, which will most likely for most people be a four or a five, maybe even a three plate, and you'll just always use that plate. Don't overlook this six plate. This six plate is giving a great shave. Just do yourself a favor and don't use a really, really sharp blade in it. You can use a sharp blade. But don't go looking to put a feather or a kai in it. That's what I'm saying. It's still just a wee bit right here, but I'm going to leave it. 
because I just don't feel like screwing with it tonight. Because uh, I'm going to shave in a couple days anyways. I just, I had to go three days because of this because I was using, I knew I was going to use a six plate. I, I wanted to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. I knew I wanted to do that. I wanted to use all the plates to show the versatility of it. And it's not really that bad to switch plates out in between passes. So you could do that too. Like I said, fingernail size piece of soap. Look what I've got left. You know what we're going to do? I haven't done it in a while. Awesome, awesome set, guys. Awesome set. Rusty razor. There's another old spice scent for you right there. Good one too. Really like that one. I think I said that already about Rusty. But he's on the search for all the all the uh, old spice scents he can find. Allen block because I did get myself. Whoa, that's a good two or three right there. Oh, we're jumping up to a five on the neck, but. I did open myself up right there. Oh yeah, nice five. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, two and a half to three on the, on the cheeks. That that six plate gets close. You know you had a good shave when areas that you normally don't get anything from Allen Block give you a two to a three on this on the sting scale. Yeah, that's not a tingle. That's a that's a sting. You know that sucker got in there close and took off all that old dead skin. Took you right down the fresh skin, baby. When did the Wright Brothers fly? 19... Nineteen oh two, nineteen oh six, something like that. But it was like sixty years from the time the Wright brothers flew to the time we landed on the moon. Six, sixty, give or take, years. A little bit. And we went from having a diesel engine. He was just looking for a replacement to the steam engines because steam engines had a bad habit of exploding too. They like to blow up. Guys would get carried away, and they get them too hot. That was witch hazel, and they'd explode. After shave, whoa, guys! Huh? I forgot there was no restrictor. Oh, burn! Burn, 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 mm. burn, burn, lots of burn. I forgot, I forgot this is the restrictor. I don't know why it, oh, okay, it just got stuck in the cap. It's supposed to be in here. 
Okay, it just got stuck in the cap when I when I unscrewed it. It took it out. I was wondering what the hell that was. But wow, that burned. Okay, Aqua Velva five and one. Just that much. Pick up all that extra aftershave that's still on my hands and in between my fingers. That was a good shave, guys. Gentlemen, the Rockwell 6C. Very good shave. It's a good shave. Damn good soap. Hoffman. HCFC collaboration. Burn the ships. Available at the wet shaving store. Dorco Titan blades. Good blades. Like these. They are not regular Dorcos. These are much, much better. The Rockwell 6C. Good, good versatile razor my versatile choice for my magnificent 11 okay i don't want to go too much longer getting into 32 close to all right guys thank you very much love you all from here thank you for showing up i appreciate you all being here don't forget to use the affiliate link when it hits 25 dollars, i buy a 25 dollars gift card and give it away to you guys i don't make anything off my affiliate link it all goes back to you guys all right love you all take care out there done with a babbling fat guy in the camera you're in the chair next Happy shaves out there, guys.